the real brass tacks of this for China, I think, was really about the AUKUS agreement, which was at the top of the agenda. Have a look at what the ambassador had to say here. I don't think uh, AUKUS is a good idea. I don't think it's uh, constructive. I don't think it's uh, uh, helpful, especially when you're targeting China as a potential threat or adversary. Is this the real sting in the tail, Paul, that the Japanese ambassador was warning about? It is, though it's uh, presented in a very understated way by uh, Xia Chan. Um, and let's remember that in his National Press Club address, address last year, he spoke in all but threatening terms about the situation, saying, among other things, China will resume sovereignty over Taiwan, whatever it takes, and when it has done so, it will re-educate the Taiwanese people to understand their place within the Chinese world. This in the immediate wake of what's been done in Hong Kong. That's the real China. And any soft soap talk from its ambassador, polished though he be, is not going to change that. We need to see actions, not smooth words. Uh, there's a deficit of trust in this country for China, given the behaviour of the Chinese regime since Xi Jinping took office, and that's not going to be easily changed. Indeed. And just before I let you go, Paul, you're now working on a follow-up to your book, Thunder from the Silent Zone, Rethinking China. How much have these recent developments, even, you know, developments we've seen in the last couple of days, shaped your work uh, on this new, new, new volume? Well, uh, the main reason we're republishing the book is because uh, when it was written 18 years ago, almost everybody in governments across the Western world, in industry, were wedded to the idea that China's rise would be, A, more or less endless, and that it would be benign, that the rising tide would lift all boats, and that China's institutions would in all probability open up and liberalise along the way somewhere, much as those of Japan, South Korea and Taiwan had done. Um, and my argument in the book, when it was first published, was that we needed to think in terms of a number of divergent scenarios. That was one that may seem plausible, but there were a lot of variables to focus on which were being ignored, it seemed to me. And I suggested there were three other scenarios that we should consider as possible futures uh, over the following 20 years. Uh, those were what I call the maturation scenario, where China got stuck in the middle income trap, uh, the metastasis scenario in which the China's the Communist Party's refusal or inability to push through reforms that would make the economy more open and sustainable, uh, uh, the, the failure to undertake those reforms would lead to implosion. And the third uh, or fourth scenario was militarisation, in which it would put an inordinate amount of resources into a military build-up and threaten or use military force. And the reason to reissue it is because now that mutation scenario, the first one of benign growth, is off the table. Mm. All three of the others are actually in play. And uh, so it's timely to reissue the book with a few uh, updates. But the primary purpose is to remind people we must think in terms of divergent scenarios and not feckless predictions.